Have you ever wondered why we stopped utilizing steam even after the petrol engine was created? Over the past couple months, I've been doing research and designing my own version of a superheated steam boiler from a simple superheated steam design that I found online. And through my tests, I have learned so much about how steam has functioned and the pains of steam <laughs> and steam transmission. For this reason, I chose to do superheated steam instead of regular steam because there is less water moisture or no water moisture at all, which causes parts to degrade less or at least slower. In order for me to tell this tale of my steam journey, we must go back many moons ago to where I knew very little about steam. So let's get on with that. So we measured and found the center hole of the can forward. Okay, we got the burner head off. Now. And that's what we're looking for. Kale wool. Back in. Now that we reinstalled the kale wool, we can actually put the coil in. So now what we have to do is add the superheated part because this is just a normal boiler right now. This is what we've come up with for the superheated part. The end of the coil is going to be connected to this check valve. This check valve will make sure nothing blows back. Next is the steam is going to come down this tube into the reservoir. The reservoir, it is two inch pipe that I think is six inches long. And this is going to fit snugly inside of the actual coil itself. The main purpose of this being heated is it'll remove the excess moisture that is present when the steam is just initially created within the coil. We have a safety relief valve. We have a pressure gauge to see what the entire system is running. And of course we have an on off valve. So I'm just gonna go and tuffle on all this together. I'm gonna drill the hole in the top of the reservoir. The original plan was to tap after drilling a hole in this cap. I don't have the right caps, so we're just gonna weld it and then I'm gonna take a drill bit and drill down the middle and it should be a perfect hole. Hopefully my welds are good enough to handle pressure. Oh, okay. And now it's done. Yep, that's it. I put the reservoir in and just made this bracket to hold everything together. Now we get to go test it. It's a water reservoir. Here's my general prediction of what is going to happen in this test. First off, I think it's going to leak a lot, but that's not the point. This is just a proof of concept to see if I can actually make steam superheated. If not, we have just made a very inefficient boiler. Opening, a little bit of gas. Let's try to light it from the bottom first. Hey, that worked. Okay, cool. So a few seconds in and we're already seeing results of it. Just the steam is steaming. We're getting a little bit of backflow, but that's okay right now. Okay, you know what? We're gonna increase the heat and just see what happens. So what I learned from this experiment is all of the areas that you think are gonna fail are gonna fail. So one way I'm gonna try to improve the system is I'm gonna put a check valve down here. Now we're gonna try to actually close it off and see if we can build pressure. That leaks a little bit terrifying. Only a little bit. Okay, I replaced the safety valve with a unsafe valve, so now we're gonna try it again. You cut off one head and 20 more grow. Gosh darn it. Well, instead of getting this video out, I decided I'm going to redesign the boiler because I wasn't happy with it. So now it runs off of a water pump system instead of a gravity pit system. And 
I changed parts so it won't leak as much and now I actually have to seal it. Sadly, the sealant we are trying to use right now is not fire resistant, but it is made for gas lines and it is made for steam lines. So we're going to be spraying this high heat grill coating on top of the connections. We are also going to be coating in a kale wool so that the open flame will not burn the connections. This is not flame resistant, but it should work for what we need it to. Raise this up so the water goes through the tube and switch on, on. Okay, water's currently pumping. <gasps> yeah! Oh, oh my god! Oh my, oh my god. Okay, 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 okay. So now we're gonna light the fire. Ignition! Woo! While this is running, well, how the water loop works is it all it does is it goes through that little pump over there pumps it up into the coil just through the coil then there's this t block here that either the water arises in the steam or it drops down into the water reservoir so right now the boiler has been running for about 20 minutes and the sun's going down i am getting a little bit of worry that we will not make it in the deadline but the water it's just hot enough where it doesn't burn your skin. That is not good enough. You need to burn my skin. Look at the steam! <laughs> Look at that! It's steam! Crazy! Well, the water is boiling. But sadly, as of right now, the tests are inconclusive once again. So we are continuously having the same issue where the steam wants to come out any port that the water is. So now I need to make a closed water return so it does not want to return to the atmosphere. between this test and last test is we just reinforced the hell out of right here with a crap ton of silicone and it's already leaking. Nope, I poured a bunch of water as you can see here. Let's get this done. Well, I looked away for a few moments and like not even, like I just turned off the camera and we're getting steam already. That's, a, that's really impressive. So far the steam boiler is acting way different than it's ever acted before. Oh. I've never had water come out of the nozzle before because it usually just boils off, but for some reason it's it's boiling all the way up, which I do not understand. Ah. I have a feeling that the superheater is actually full of water on accident, so maybe that's what this extra water coming up is. I'm running it for a few minutes with the heat lower, not getting any more steam produced, so you know what? Screw it. I'm probably going to rebuild this entire system anyways because it's really janky. So let's just run it to its limits. Let's close this off. Increase the heat. Let's see what happens. We don't seem to be having the same issue that we had earlier. Where our water is coming out of the top. I don't know what caused that.
I would just like to say thank you so much for watching. If you really made it this far, I am so grateful. And please, if you like my content, like and subscribe. Maybe leave a comment down below, like what you think about the project, what you think I could do better. I'm looking for a way to pump the boiling water because at that last test, I was going to run another test to make this video even longer, but I had issues where I burned up the pump, so I didn't want to spend 60 bucks right now or whatever on a pump that could transfer boiling water. So if anybody has any ideas, like I tried making a water pump out of a two-stroke engine. Didn't work out very well because of the pressurization system, but that's beyond the point. So thank you. You, you right there behind the screen. I see you. I see you. I'm in your walls. No, thank you so much for watching. And uh, I am so grateful for you. <laughs> Have a fantastic day. And if there's something like that you want to see powered by steam one day, just maybe leave it down below because like I have some cool ideas and I'm not going to spoil all of them right now, but I have some cool ideas if I do end up actually being able to make this steam engine be able, make the steam boiler to be able to actually function properly. I've been trying to get more creative with these videos and I've been trying to get more creative with the editing. I am so happy with how this video has come out so far. So. Uh, I, I'm sorry, I keep saying thank you, but just thank you and enjoy my field. I can't go that far because it's Mike.